welcome to Info Hub. In our headlines, another Lozignan escapee is behind bars. Tobacco control bill passed by overwhelming majority. Better service from the High Court, constitutional reform bill presented to Parliament, and Guyana is going fully digital. We'll bring you the details shortly. Stay with us. Thanks for staying with us. We start this evening by reporting that another Lusignan prison escapee, Pascal Smith, was apprehended today in a pit latrine in Kitty Georgetown, where he was hiding out. Information is that his reputed wife had been encouraging him to turn himself in, but he refused, and she called the police and provided information on his whereabouts. He was peacefully apprehended. The Tobacco Control Bill 2017 was passed by an overwhelming majority in the National Assembly last evening. More from Zanil Williams. The National Assembly last night passed the landmark Tobacco Control Bill 2017, which will target smoking in indoor public places and ban advertising of tobacco products. The bill passed by a vote of 32 to 1 with 23 opposition absentations, was tabled by Minister of Public Health, Valda Lawrence. In an attempt to lull smokers into a sense of security, the tobacco industry introduced filters on cigarettes. The public relations strategy did not stop there, sir. It gave the impression that one brand posed less danger to health than another. And so we had low tar, ultralight, mild, natural, and so on and so on. Today, the tobacco industry is again trying to lull us all into a false sense of security with e-cigarettes. E-cigarettes are the new light that the industry has presented to us. And it is my view, sir, in the face of new threats, that we in this honorable house must take urgent and resolute action. The Tobacco Control Bill 2017 bans smoking at all indoor workplaces, public transport and strictly regulates the sale of cigarettes while creating reporting requirements for manufacturers, wholesale distributors or importers. Penalties for various offenses range from $9 million to $200,000 and could also include a period of imprisonment. It will also see pictorial and health warnings having to be placed on at least 60% of the packaging of tobacco products. Zinil Williams for InfoHub. Also in the National Assembly yesterday, the Constitutional Reform Bill was presented for the first reading by Prime Minister Moses Nagamutu. The bill supports the government's goal of reforming the Constitution to the point where it is more inclusive, democratic and transparent, removing all irregularities. It provides for the establishment of a 15-member Constitutional Reform Consultative Commission to assist the Parliamentary Standing Committee for Constitutional Reform. The draft law was referred to the Parliamentary Standing Committee on Constitutional Reform for consideration and report. Everything is now under one roof at the High Court. More in this Delon Sanko report. President David Granger today commissioned the new Land Court Wing of the High Court. By this act, bringing together all the divisions of the court, the President explained that the intervention are in keeping with the administration's commitment to make the judicial system more accessible and independent. It is in a way the opening of a new chapter in our country's quest to improve the administration of justice and particularly to expand access to justice for all. Construction of this new wing of the High Court of the Supreme Court of Judicature represents another investment in ensuring access to justice. It helps to overcome the cost and complexity of litigation by providing access to specialized courts, civil courts, commercial courts, family courts, land courts, to deal with specialized cases. Chancellor of the Judiciary, Madam Justice Yonet Cummins Edward, highlighted the convenience of bringing all the divisions on the one roof. The Chancellor noted that this will allow for saving in cost, time, and efficiency. It has now found its way back home like the proverbial prodigal child, and we say, welcome home. This allows for easier physical access to justice for litigants and attorneys at law. It allows for easier management of the court and the registries and the saving of costs and expenses. 
The new wing was the vision of the former Chancellor of the Judiciary, Justice Carl Singh. It will accommodate courtrooms with modern-day technology. It will implement new civil and family procedure rules. For the past five months, these new procedures have been aiding with the backlog of cases. 1,258 cases have been filed and almost half has been completed. Delon Sanko for InfoHub. The Attorney General and Minister of Education brought clarity to the stakeholders on the Cricket Administration Bill. Here is Delon Sanko once again. Attorney General Basil Williams explained to the stakeholders and members of the Guyana Cricket Board that after the injunction was filed on April 29, 2015 and entered the same day by the then Chief Justice Ian Chang, the court said that the holding and elections is under the Guyana Cricket Administration. The hearing was suspended until determination of substantive action and it was then the member's responsibility to follow the necessary steps. When this order was done making this making this um, injunction interlocutory, time started to run. It meant then that the plaintiffs had to file this statement of claim and actually take steps in the proceedings. That wasn't done. That was not done. And so if you did not know, took no step within a year, then the matter is capable of being deemed abandoned. If it's deemed abandoned and incapable of revival, it's a final order. So that's where we are. And um, it means, in effect, that since there's no stay, that um, there's no impediment for the minister now to act. And so I'll hand you over to the minister. Minister Nicolette Henry noted that since the matter is now an issue for the Ombudsman, and given that she has responsibility over the sports fraternity, she will do everything in her will to bring the issue to an halt. We're going to be working with the earliest possible timelines. That being said, I will first have to engage with the Ombudsman to determine the specific timelines, and that's when I can pronounce on dates. Um, it will not be very prudent of me and certainly not um, fair to the Ombudsman to be giving timelines without even consulting with him in so far as having regard to the volume of work that will be required to be done by that person. Minister Henry is to meet with the Ombudsman next and then a meeting with the board members and stakeholders will follow. Delon Sanko for Info Hub. Ghana is moving towards going fully digital, and the roadmap has been developed to chart the way forward. Gabriella Patram has been tracking this story. Guyana is aiming to be fully digital by 2020. At the opening of a one-day consultation workshop session at the Guyana Police Force Training Center, Minister of Public Telecommunications Catherine Hughes told broadcasting station operators that the transition process has to be a collaborative effort. The world is moving at a pace. And in some respects in Guyana, we have been a little slow to embrace a lot of the changes in technology. Having said that, the reality is that to, in today's world, we either prepare and change, if not, we will be left behind. And that's what we're talking about this morning, how it is that we can embrace new technology how we plan for the inevitable change that is required. We all know that our systems are still on analog systems, and many, many parts of the world have already transitioned to digital terrestrial television. Managing Director of the National Frequency Management Unit, Valamiki Singh, explained that the process is at the implementation stage. Essentially, the roadmap is a tool that helps us in managing this process. It's a very complex process, so it basically helps in managing um, the process and matching short and long-term goals and indicating activities that we have to do and you know, the goals in terms of what we need to achieve. The International Telecommunications Union has published guidelines for the transition from analog to digital broadcasting. The ITU is assisting several countries, including Guyana, to develop national plans for this transition. The project for Guyana was funded by the Republic of South Korea. ITU consultant Dr. Andrews Navarro aided in preparation of the roadmap. Gabrielle Patram for DPI Info Hub. Zanil joins us again to tell us that Guyana will begin earning oil revenue as soon as the first barrel of oil is extracted. 
Ghana's oil production is set for 2020, and Exxon's operations manager, Doug McGeehy, said Guyanese will see immediate revenues. It's going to have, it will have a positive impact on the economy. The big thing, though, is the revenue that comes from the project. When this project starts, the government gets revenue from day one. Exxon is currently in the first phase development of the Liza Field offshore drill site. We're going to have 17 wells uh, that we're going to drill for Liza phase one development. Eight of those are actually going to be wells that produce oil. Six of those will be wells that inject water, and three inject gas. Why? Why do we inject water and gas? If you extract the oil out of the ground, pressure drops, you reduce the pressure. We don't want that. McGeehee said Exxon and its partners are confident going ahead with these developments. Once production begins, the Liza wells will produce up to 120 barrels of oil per day. The Liza field alone is expected to produce up to half a billion barrels of oil. Zanil Williams for InfoHub. It's Friday, so here is Tamika Garnett with Sports Hub. Welcome to Sports Hub. Young boxer Kevin Alicock prevailed as Guyana's lone medalist at the Commonwealth Youth Games, where he won a silver medal. Alicock wasn't the only Guyanese making strides overseas this week. Competing in the Pan American Badminton Championships in Canada, Priyana Ramdani partnered with Guatemala's Sarah Chiang and made it into the quarterfinals of the girls' doubles. In cricket, Bashkar Yadram continued in fine form with another half century as the West Indies on the 19th commenced with a 39-run win over Zimbabwe in their three-match youth one-day international series. On the b-ball court, Guyana is not doing so well. At the FIBA Central Basket Tournament in the Dominican Republic, the boys opened with a 51-point loss against the Bahamas and later went down against Puerto Rico. The Green Machine, Guyana's national rugby team, is set to battle it out against USA in the finals of the Rugby America's North 15th Championships at the National Park Rugby Field tomorrow. The semifinals of the GT Bear Keep Your Five Alive futsal competition is on tomorrow at the National Gymnasium, where Sparta Boss will take on future stars and Back Circle battles West Front Road. Up in Linden, the Hamilton Green Cup Knockout Football Tournament kicks off tonight at the MSC Ground from 7 p.m. Turning to swimming, Guyana is being represented at the FINA World Championships by Olympians Hannibal Gaskin and Jamila Sanmugan, along with overseas-based Guyanese Joseph Di Nobriga. And during this weekend, the Kennard Memorial Pre-Emancipation Horse Race Meet runs off on Sunday in Burbese. The big event on Sunday will be the final of the Digital Schools Football Tournament at Lenora. And I secondary from Region 9 will go up against Chase Academy. For the first time in the history of the tournament, Krishnaburg Wisma secondary will not be in the finals of the competition after they were wiped out by Chase Academy in the semis. Goodbye. Thanks for watching. Connect with us 24-7 on our website and social media. Have a safe weekend.